Did you know those silver fillings in people's mouths actually contain mercury and other metals? And did you know that excessive amounts of mercury exposure can actually be harmful to your health? This doesn't necessarily mean that silver fillings are bad for you because they can be useful in certain situations. Now there's a lot of debate out there around the toxicity levels of mercury in silver dental fillings. And I'm not gonna get into the specifics of that in this video because I know whatever the amount is, there's one thing in dentistry that is guaranteed to be way more toxic than that. And I'm gonna share it with you and break it down all in this video. Hey, my name is Dr. Avi. I'm a retired dentist and entrepreneur. So the one thing that's more toxic than mercury is the entire dental industry. The dental industry is very slow at adapting when it comes to innovations and change. Most dentists like to stay stuck in their old ways. This has a negative compounding effect over time and we've reached a point where enough is enough. So how would you feel if someone came up to you at your job and you've never met them before and they told you this, hey, I hate your profession, I hate what you do, and I hate being in your workplace. That'd probably make you feel like crap, huh? Well, this is something that dentists experience every day. Look, I get it. Being at the dentist isn't the most enjoyable thing out there. But if you didn't see your dentist, your oral health would get worse. And I'll be the first to tell you that dentists these days are actively trying to take measures to improve the experience that you have in the dental office. Some dentists are willing to go the extra mile and put TVs on the ceiling, give you noise canceling headphones and give you blankets while you get your procedures done. All of these are investments to try to improve the patient experience in the dental office. Office. Take note of these the next time that you're in your practice and you'll see how much of an effort your dentist is trying to make. The second component to the toxic dental industry is the toxic cycle for practice ownership for dentists. To display the cycle, I want to share a story about Dr. Mark's journey to practice ownership. Let's start with when he graduated dental school. So after Dr. Mark graduates, he has big dreams and visions of being the best dentist. He realizes that while he learned a lot in dental school, he still has a long way to go. So what did he do? He listened to what other successful dentists told him to do. And what do these dentists tell him? You need to find a mentor and learn as much as possible. So he did just that. A local dentist, Dr. Gary, was looking to hire an associate. And he said he was willing to mentor a young dentist who was motivated to learn. Dr. Mark thought this sounded like an incredible opportunity. So he took Dr. Gary up on it. Dr. Mark was committed and dedicated to learning as much as possible from Dr. Gary. Dr. Mark would go in early. He'd stay in late. He'd ask a lot of questions. He'd be willing to shadow while he was on the job. So so Dr. Mark needed to make money, but he wasn't focusing on that right now because he knew that learning was more important than earning at this stage in his career. And he trusted that Dr. Gary had his best interests in mind. Fast forward a few months, Dr. Mark started to realize that he was not very busy even when he was implementing everything that Dr. Gary had taught him. This started to stress out Dr. Mark because he had bills to pay. The biggest one being his dental student loan, which was a $500,000 loan and had monthly payments of around four grand. So as Dr. Mark started to troubleshoot what could be going on and why he wasn't busy, he saw that patients who he diagnosed treatment on were actually ending up on Dr. Gary's schedule. He thought, how could this be? Turns out Dr. Gary had been poaching Dr. Mark's patients because Dr. Gary wanted to ensure that his schedule was full so that way he was busy. Dr. Mark felt hurt, betrayed, and played. So he decided to look elsewhere for a job. All he wanted was a stable job. This shouldn't be that hard of an opportunity to find, right? Well, after five associateships, he found out that he was wrong and he experienced pretty much the same type of betrayal and toxicity in different forms. So what did he do next? He decided to open up his own practice and be his own boss. This way, nobody could hurt him anymore. And he did just that. Mind you, he has zero knowledge about how to be a small business owner. His educational journey was high school, straight to college, straight to dental school, straight to practicing. All he's ever learned about were teeth. But he thought, well, if Dr. Gary and all these other owners could do it, why not me? And at this point, the bank made him feel even more confident in his ability to be a small business owner because they just handed him an $800,000 loan to start up his own practice. The bank does this because most dental offices have a 10% chance of failure. So now, Dr. Mark has about $1.3 million of debt with little to no dental or business expertise, something to keep in mind. So fast forward a few extremely difficult and stressful years for Dr. Mark while he's starting his practice. He's trying to just figure out practice owners which includes two areas where he lacks education, clinical and the business side of dentistry. And Dr. Mark realizes he needs help because he is burning out from all this stress. So instead of hiring a dental practice coach to help mentor him through these challenges, what does he do? He decides to hire an associate so that way they can take on all the dental work that he doesn't want to do so that way he can have more time to do other things. Now, Dr. Mark hires Dr. Andrew. Dr. Andrew is a young, motivated dentist, eager to learn and be a great dentist 
dentist himself. Dr. Mark promises Dr. Andrew mentorship and the ability to be a great dentist in the future so long as he works for him. Now, Dr. Mark is still very protective about his procedures and his schedule. He wants to make sure that he has a consistent patient flow because he thinks that the more procedures he does, the more money he'll make and that will help him getting closer to paying back that $1.3 million loan he has on his head. So on the days where his schedule is slow, what does he do? He tells his front desk to move patients from Dr. Andrew's schedule onto his. This way, his schedule is never empty and is always busy. This sounds familiar, doesn't it? It's exactly how Dr. Mark was treated when he was a young associate. And he doesn't even realize what he's doing because all he can think about right now is himself and his problems. Now, can you guess how Dr. Andrew feels about the situation? And you probably know what he does next too. This is just one aspect of the toxic cycle of dental practice ownership. Now, before we move forward in the video, please comment below and share your thoughts. Has this happened to you? If so, what industry are you in? I'm asking because when you comment, it tells YouTube that this video is relatable to you. And then YouTube will take it and show it to other people who also might be able to relate to it. Now, have you ever had someone throw something sharp at you while you were trying to do your job at work? If so, you might be a dental hygienist or a dental assistant. Now, if you were paying attention to Dr. Mark's story, you can probably imagine how stressed out that man was. That's pretty normal for most dentists. You can also tell that he probably wasn't taking a lot of time for self-care to help manage that stress. Well, one way apparently that stress can be released is by throwing instruments at your staff whenever you're angry. The crazy thing is this used to be a normal thing back in the day. If a dental team member would make a mistake, for whatever reason, some dentists felt like it was totally fine to just throw stuff at them, like a child. This is not okay. I know this is true because I've worked at several offices and almost one team member at every office had said that they appreciated how patient I was whenever they made mistakes because they used to work for people who had thrown instruments at them. Now, I believed my team members when they told me about this and I actually made a reel about it and posted it on social media. And that post went viral. So many dental team members ended up commenting and reaching out, sharing traumatic stories that had happened to them. I was in utter shock. I felt like I pulled a curtain back for something that's so terrible that I didn't think was common or even happening, yet it seemed to be normalized in this industry to a certain degree. And now the point of all of this was to bring light to issues that are happening and have happened in the dental industry. And I wanna get the discussion going on this stuff because these are all things too many people experience and the first step towards change is awareness. You can be part of this change by simply sharing this video with a group chat that you're in or posting it onto your social media page. Now this is just one layer of the toxicity in the dental industry. All these issues bubble up and when they do bad things can happen. I'm talking real bad. And if you wanna know where dentistry lands on the scale of suicide rates for professions, you're gonna wanna watch this video. 